while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gives to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry none other has ever known. Good morning. Before we get started today, let me just say a word of thanks to all of you who have been praying for my wife. Uh, she was in the hospital for 14 days, uh, very ill and very close to death at one time. And uh, thank God today she is uh, out of the hospital and doing much better. But I would appreciate so much your continued prayers. Well, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God is good all the time. I want you to turn your Bibles this morning, and uh, while you're turning there, or while you're getting your Bible, I should say, let's go ahead and sing. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites the chosen people, come and dine. 
With his manna he doth feed, and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. Well, we're going to be looking in Psalm 136. If you'll be turning there, and while you're turning to Psalm 136, let me just uh, uh, tell you that recently we celebrated Thanksgiving, and in this time of year we especially are reminded of uh, because of Thanksgiving, how thankful we really ought to be. Uh, one of the favorite uh, turkey stories at this time I always think of is the turkey who was in the barnyard, and one night he got watching the sun as it set, and uh, he just watched it go down. And uh, But they said that he stayed up all night trying to figure out what happened to it. And then finally it dawned on him. Well... I wonder how long it'll be before it'll dawn on some of us how thankful and how grateful we should really be. So I want to speak today on the subject of when will it dawn on us? When will we realize the goodness of God, the blessings of God, and how fortunate we are to have a God like we do? Certainly, we ought to be overwhelmed with gratitude and thanking the Lord. Let's look at Psalms 136 and uh, verse 1 through 3. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, if you look in every verse in that chapter, every verse includes those words, for his mercy endureth forever. And then over in Psalm 150, verse 6, it says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So if you are alive today and have breath, God said that we ought to praise Him. All of us ought to be continually overwhelmed, thanking God for all of His many, many blessings. And then in the New Testament, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks. Now, we read in Psalm 150, verse 6, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And now we read in the New Testament, in everything give thanks. In other words, everything that's alive ought to be thanking God, or excuse me, everyone that's alive ought to be thanking God for everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Isn't it a tragedy that in spite of the fact of all of his blessings and all that we ought to be thanking him for, so many people... People's mouths are full of cursing and bitterness and anger when really they ought to be full of praise and thankfulness to our Lord and Savior. Let's pray together. Ask God to bless our message today. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray today that you will make us a grateful people. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done. And Lord, I pray today that you will examine our hearts 
and show us areas in our lives that we may not be as thankful as we ought to be. And Lord, I pray that you might draw us close to yourself and meet our spiritual needs this hour. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever been in a group, perhaps at a Sunday school class, or somewhere when the leader may say, well, let's go around the room and everybody give thanks for something that you're thankful for. And then if you look around, you see perhaps in a Sunday school class, the children as they scratch their heads and they, they think for a while and seemingly having a hard time to come up with something that they can talk about and how thankful they are. Well, Psalms 147.1 says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is, a, it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. In Psalm 138, verse 1, it says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. You see, not half-heartedly praise God, but with our whole heart before the gods will I sing unto thee. Again, the verse that we looked at in Psalms 150, verse 6 let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So again, if you're alive and you're breathing today, you ought to be praising God for everything. Remember the ten lepers? And Jesus cleansed them of their leprosy. But do you remember how many of those of the ten lepers came back to even say thank you? You're right, only one. Only one returned to say thank you. It's tragic to see in God's Word that one of the great sins of the Bible and one of the marks of the last days is on thankfulness. We read in 2 Timothy 3, 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and then notice the next word, unthankful, unholy. And right in the midst of all of those sins, we see the sin of unthankfulness. Foolish pride and arrogance causes people to be ungrateful. And that's really foolish because we have no reason to be proud. Everything we have is by the grace of God. Henry Beecher said, A proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he never thinks he gets as much as he deserves. Tragic to watch folks go through life. Many of them ignore God and disregard God and see many who claim to believe in God and yet they turn away from Him and forsake Him. And so, again, it's tragic to see so many people who are not thankful, not rejoicing, not praising God, but in fact are bitter and confused, troubled and angry, hateful and confused as to why they even exist. And they are uncertain what the very purpose of life is. But everything that we have, including life itself, is because of God. Every day that we can live is a gift of God. Years ago, there was a famous baseball player by the name of Lou Gehrig. And uh, Lou Gehrig came down with a disease that is now named after him, Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, his career was cut short as playing professional professional baseball and on his last day that he was able to play the Yankee fans honored him and he spoke to the crowd that was there and he started off with this sentence today I consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of earth you see Lou Gehrig had a grateful heart he was thankful for the opportunity he had to play professional sports and to play for as long as he did. 
And then he went on to say how thankful he was for the opportunities he had been given and for the love and the support of his fans. I'm thankful that we have a day called Thanksgiving that is set aside to give thanks to God. But in reality, our thanksgiving ought to be all the time, 24-7. Colossians 3.15, it said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Now I know according to Isaiah 57, 20 and 21, it says that the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt, and there's no sea peace, saith my God to the wicked. But believers, shame on us who have had our sins washed in the blood of the Lamb. We have been born into the family of God. And because we are children of God, we're a child of the King and a joint heir of Jesus Christ, having obtained eternal life, having the Holy Spirit indwell within us, and then to imagine not to have a grateful spirit. <clears throat> Believers' hearts, as I said in the beginning, ought to be overflowing with gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, again the verse that I began with, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we need to be bubbling over with praise and singing, overwhelmed by His goodness and His blessings. Philippians 4.4, 4, the Apostle Paul wrote from prison, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it says rejoice evermore. My friend, if you're alive today, God says in Psalms 92.1, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. Certainly God is worthy of our praise. And hopefully we would not be so ignorant and proud and ashamed to give it to Him. We sing the little song that the songwriter wrote, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. I love Him so, I love Him so, I love Him so, He's so good to me. This is a special time of the year that we honor God, we sing, we praise, and we give thanks. But I, I mean, let me just mention a few things that every child of God should be thankful for. First of all, we should be thankful for God's awesome pardon. Hey, we deserve judgment, right? But God in His mercy... In Psalms 118.1 said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. The top of the list for every believer ought to be thanking God for His forgiveness of our sins and the pardon that He offered. And the second thing I want to mention is God's awesome grace, which means unmerited favor, not that we deserve heaven, not that we deserve to be forgiven, but you see, salvation and eternal life is offered to us by the grace of God, the unmerited favor. Ephesians 2.89 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then there's a third thing that we all ought to be thankful for this morning, and that is God's awesome gift of salvation. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Apostle Paul wrote, Thanks be to God for His unspeakable gift. And the little chorus that we grew up singing in Sunday school as children, 
Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich, so free. And then, fourthly, we need to thank God for his awesome love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 6, and 8 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth or demonstrated his love to us, or toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then... The fifth thing I want to mention is God's awesome promises. Listen, my friends, if you've been born again, you've been saved from judgment, then you are without a doubt one of the most fortunate and blessed people on this earth. Our hearts ought to be overflowing with gratitude and thankfulness for the awesome God. Psalm 92, 1, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. We need to thank God for his presence, his promise, that he would fill us with his spirit and indwell us. And in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And then thank God for his provisions. Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And then thank God for his protection. Psalm 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And then thank God for his peace. Isaiah 26.3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then Paul wrote from prison again in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then thank God for his promises, not only for now, but for the future, promises of salvation and forgiveness, and for his return to come back for us. John 14, 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And then thank God for the joy that he gives to us. Now, you say, Pastor, I am thankful today. I am grateful. But how do I prove it? Believers today might say, you know, I do love the Lord, and, but I know I've not been as grateful as I could be or should be. And I need to ask God to forgive me. After all that He has given to me and, and all that He's done for me, out of a heart of gratitude, I need to give myself to Him and surrender my will and my life to serve Him. So I invite you today to unashamedly come to Him, kneel before Him, and thank Him for all He's done for you, and then surrender your life for Him. Maybe there's someone listening today and you'd say, but Pastor Bob, I, I'm not sure that I am saved. I, I, I'm not a believer. And uh, my sins have not been forgiven. And I can't sing about my sins being washed in the blood. And I can't sing those songs about heaven, knowing that I'm going there. 
In fact, there may be someone listening today and you may not even love God. You may not be thankful to God. But my friend, consider this. You ought to be thankful that He tells us in the Word that He loves you. And that He died on the cross for you to pay for your sins. And we ought to be thankful that He arose from the dead just like He had prophesied, showing that the sin debt had been paid in full for you and for me. And then certainly we ought to be thankful that He invites us to come to Him. And in John 6, 37 said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I'm thankful that God says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And in Romans 10, 13, He invites us, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in Revelation 3.20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So today in closing, let me just encourage you to believe him, to trust him, to love him, to thank him for all that he has done for you. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Again this morning, I want to thank you for your blessings, for your goodness. And Lord, I, I realize today that I do not deserve all of those blessings. Lord, I'm thankful you didn't give me what I deserved. But by your grace, you offered me eternal life. And Father, I pray if there be one listening today that's never been saved, that right now from their heart, they would just cry out to you and call upon you and trust you to be their Savior. And then, Lord, as Christians, all of us that are listening, and Lord, I just pray that we would just surrender afresh and anew our lives to be used for your glory. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember, the Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good, tell it that others may know. Tell of His goodness and tell of His love. Tell how He's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. God bless you, have a wonderful day, and thanks again for listening.